Welcome. Welcome to worship at All Saints in Big Sky on this uh, cold morning. We are so glad that you made it here safely, and we hope you make it home safely as well. We're also glad for those who join us online this morning. Uh, welcome. This is the fourth Sunday after Epiphany, and uh, this Sunday and every Sunday at All Saints, we celebrate Holy Eucharist where Jesus Christ is the host and the food at this table and invites us all to come forward for that gift of grace. I also want to invite you to come and join us for a time of coffee and fellowship down in our lower level after worship today. Get yourself uh, warmed up before you go and face the cold again. Um, and it's always a chance to get to know folks better. So we hope to see you there. Just a few announcements. First of all, I want to give a resounding thank you to Richard, who stepped in yesterday um, for, uh, to be our musician today. Um, we are, Bonnie is OK, but couldn't make it here today. And so we are so grateful that Richard was willing to step in at the very last minute to be our musician. Uh, later today at 2 o'clock, there will be a memorial service for Laura Saki's mother, Audrey Tostevin. That memorial will take place um, at the chapel here at 2, and it will be followed by a reception uh, across the street at Michelangelo's. All are welcome to come to the memorial and to join for some fellowship at the reception afterwards. Um, we are grateful uh, for a chance to support Laura. Her mother was 95 when she died and lived a long and good life. Um, but we want to celebrate that life today and uh, give our support to Laura and her family. A few other announcements. There were some keys found on the floor. So if you try to leave here and can't, there might be your key that's with the usher. So um, Les, Les is uh, filling in, and we'll have that key in, um, in the entryway of the chapel. Next Sunday, important announcement. We are holding our All Saints annual meeting, and that annual meeting will be taking place entirely by Zoom at 12.30. So hopefully that gives you enough time to come to worship if you can, and then get home, and then join us online at 12.30 for that annual meeting. That's the time that we um, elect or re-elect our joint council members and elect delegates, both for the Episcopal Convention and the Lutheran Assembly, and also have a chance to um, look at what we've done in the last year and look a little bit ahead to the future. So please do join if you're able. And also, next Sunday, which is the 5th of February, we have our International Workers' Dinner that All Saints is partnering with the Rotary Club to put on to uh, basically thank um, some of the international workers that have come here from all over the world uh, to work at the resorts. Um, many of you have already signed up to help out, and this is your last chance to sign up. And then Laura's going to take down the sign-up sheet today and contact those that are on it. So there's a couple of more slots downstairs if you're able to help out. Let's take a moment of quiet and prepare ourselves for worship. Please rise and face the font. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God who makes all things new, whose mercy endures forever. Amen. Amen. Trusting in God's mercy, let us confess our sin. Holy One, source of our renewal, 
we confess that we are wrapped up in sin and cannot free ourselves. We have not practiced your righteousness. Our hearts have turned away from you. For the sake of the world you so love, forgive us that we may be reconciled to one another for the glory of your holy name. Amen. Thus says our God, the former things have come to pass and new things I now declare. God's mercy makes us new. We are forgiven in the name of Christ our Savior. Amen. Lord be with you. Let us pray. Holy God, you confound the world's wisdom in giving your kingdom to the lowly and the pure in heart. Give us such a hunger and thirst for justice and perseverance in striving for peace, that in our words and deeds, the world may see the life of your Son. Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. You may be seated, and I invite any children to come forward. So I want to ask you, has any one of you ever been told you're too little to do something? Yes. yes. Or maybe you're not, you're not old enough to do something? Yes. yes, yes. Or maybe you're not big enough to do something? Yes. That's a feeling I think sometimes we have a lot feels like everybody's telling us that we have to wait, that we're not ready to do things right now. 
And Jesus, in, in our, one of the readings that we're going to hear today at church, Jesus is talking to a whole bunch of people who are young and old. But what he's telling them is, even though they might not feel like they're big enough or old enough or strong enough to do something yet, Jesus is saying that they are just as they are blessed. Just like they are. They don't have to wait until they're older. They don't have to wait until they're bigger. They're blessed right now. And I think that's a gift because Jesus is telling us that too, that we are blessed right now. When you're 10, when you're 10, when you're how old are you? Three, when you're five, you're already blessed by Jesus. And then if we're blessed, well, then we can go out there and try to live as God wants us to live. And we're going to learn a little song here, if you will help me learn it. Because sometimes we think, oh, how do we live as God wants us to live? And sometimes there's some simple ways to remember that, like with a song. And so the first part goes, what does the Lord require of you? Let's try that. What does the Lord require of you? What does the Lord require of you? What does the Lord require of you? Let's try that whole thing. What does the Lord require of you? What does the Lord require of you? And now here's the answer. To seek justice. To seek justice and love kindness and love kindness and walk humbly and walk humbly with your God with your God Do you think we could try that whole thing? To seek justice and love kindness and walk humbly with your God To seek justice and love kindness and walk humbly with your God. Oh, thanks so much for coming up here. If any of you want to go downstairs to Small Saints with Miss Domi, she is here. Okay. Okay. A reading from Micah. Hear what the Lord says. Rise, plead your case before the mountains, and let the hills hear your voice. Hear in your mountains the controversy of the Lord, and you enduring foundations of the earth. For the Lord has a controversy with his people, and he will contend with Israel. O my people, What have I done to you? In what have I wearied you? Answer me. For I brought you up from the land of Egypt and redeemed you from the house of slavery. And I sent before you Moses, Aaron, and Miriam. O my people, remember now what King Balak of Moab devised, what Balaam, son of Beor, answered him. And what happened from Shittim to Gilgal, that you might know the saving acts of God. With what shall I come before the Lord and bow myself before God on high? Shall I come before him with burnt offerings, with calves a year old? Will the Lord be pleased with thousands of rams, with ten thousands of rivers of oil? Shall I give my firstborn for my transgression, the fruit of my body for the sin of my soul? He has told you, O mortal, what is good. And what does the Lord require of you but to do justice, to love kindness, 
and to walk humbly with your God. Word of God, word of life. A reading from 1 Corinthians. The message about the cross is foolish to those who are perishing, but to us who are being saved, it is the power of God. For it is written, I will destroy the wisdom of the wise, and the discernment of the discerning I will thwart. Where is the one who is wise? Where is the scribe? Where is the debater of this age? Has not God made foolish the wisdom of the world? For since in the wisdom of God, the world did not know God through wisdom, God decided through the foolishness of our proclamation to save those who believe. For Jews demand signs and Greeks desire wisdom, but we proclaim Christ crucified a stumbling block to the Jews, and foolishness to Gentiles. But to those who are are the called, both Jews and Greeks, Christ the power of God and the wisdom of God, for God's foolishness is wiser than human wisdom, and God's weakness is stronger than human strength. Consider your own call, brothers and sisters, Not many of you were wise by human standards. Not many were powerful. Not many were of noble birth. But God chose what is foolish in the world to shame the wise. God chose what is weak in the world to shame the strong. God chose what is low and despised in the world, things that are not, to reduce to nothing things that are so that no one might boast in the presence of God. He is the source of your life in Christ Jesus, who became for us wisdom from God, and righteousness, and sanctification, and redemption, in order that, as it is written, let the one who boasts, boast in the Lord. Word of God, word of life. <clears throat> oh. 
Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to Matthew. Glory to you, Lord Christ. When Jesus saw the crowds, he went up to the mountain, and after he sat down, his disciples came to him. And then he began to speak, and he taught them, saying, Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are those who mourn, for they will be comforted. Blessed are the meek, for they will inherit the earth. Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they will be filled. Blessed are the merciful, for they will receive mercy. Blessed are the pure in heart, for they will see God. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they shall be called the children of God. Blessed are those who are persecuted for righteousness' sake, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are you when people revile you and persecute you and utter all kinds of evil against you falsely on my account. Rejoice and be glad, for your reward is great in heaven. For in the same way they persecuted the prophets who were before you. The Gospel of the Lord. The problem is, Jesus, we don't feel particularly blessed. We don't feel blessed when we are poor in spirit, when we are feeling awful or hopeless or alone. And we don't feel blessed when we are mourning, especially when we are mourning somebody that we dearly loved and lost at the wrong time. And we don't feel blessed when we are hungry or thirsty for righteousness, when things are not right and we desperately want them to be right, but we don't know how to make them right. We don't feel blessed when we are trying to be peacemakers, but instead there seem to be quarrels and arguments and battles all around us, and we aren't having any effect. And we certainly don't feel blessed when we are seeking justice and loving kindness, but we are persecuted for doing so. Jesus, you tell us today, blessed are you, but we don't feel particularly blessed. And we may even feel the opposite, troubled, afflicted, or even cursed. What does it mean? What does it mean that Jesus utters these blessings? I mean, he declares them. He pronounces them. And we want to believe that somehow Jesus' blessings are real, are true. And we want to believe that they're real and true, not just sometime in the future, some pie in the sky when you die, but starting now. Blessed are they. Blessed 
Are you? Jesus says. Not only later, after you die. Jesus' blessing must start now. I mean, when we bless things or people or situations, we mean for God's blessing to start now. When we bless a child in holy baptism, when we bless a couple in marriage, when we bless a person as they prepare to go off to college or join the military or move into a new home or perhaps be ordained as a deacon or a priest or a pastor, we are asking God to pour out favor and mercy starting now. We are, in fact, counting on God to show up starting now and provide what is needed. Provide patience for a wait or endurance in the face of pain or comfort at a time of grief or, well, grace sufficient for the situation. Maybe that's why we have to come to church, because it's really hard to believe that. We need help living into this faith. It is not easy at all. It is not easy to believe that when we are in our greatest moment of need, Jesus will bless us. It is not easy to believe that when we are at our worst, God will come close with grace. Maybe just a morsel. And maybe it's not easy to believe because we're actually looking for a different kind of God. A God who maybe will give us a sign, and I'm talking about a bright and visible and brilliant sign, whenever we ask for it. I mean, wouldn't that be nice to snap our fingers and poof, there, God gives us a sign and we know exactly what to do. Or we desire a God who will give us wisdom. Poof, like that. All of a sudden we know. We know what we're supposed to do. We know and we feel better about ourselves, maybe better about ourselves than all the foolish people around us. But we don't get that God. Instead, the God who comes to us in Jesus Christ shows up on the cross. That is, God comes close to us in our vulnerability, in our need, in our emptiness, in our grief, in our poverty of spirit, in our sense of rejection, in our pain. And God doesn't come with a magic wand and poof, everything's better. But God shows up and comes close and walks alongside us. God blesses us with grace sufficient for that moment. Maybe just this much. But it is enough for that moment, and then a little bit more for the next and a little bit more for the next. I'm not saying it's easy. It is not easy to believe that that blessing, that grace is even there. I mean, we feel in awful moments that we have been abandoned by God. My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? We may actually whisper those words or call them out, forgetting that that, are, that, of course, are the words that Jesus called out from the cross. But it's not easy to believe that we are blessed when we feel, well, more like cursed. And 
sometimes it is only later, after time has passed, that we're able to see God's hand at work. That we're able to see God's hand in the people that showed up with food or with hugs or in the friends who reached out from across the country, or in the words of support that were murmured by a neighbor, or in a moment of silence we finally had outdoors, or even in the tears that we finally wept. Sometimes it's only later that we are able to see, able to trust that God actually did show up and blessed us with a morsel of grace. But it was enough. It got us through. This week I have been thinking about a remarkable event that took place just a week ago. Just last Sunday, for the first time in history, a Palestinian Christian woman named Sally Azar was ordained to the ministry of Word and Sacrament. She is now a pastor, and she is serving the Church of the Redeemer in the old city of Jerusalem. You know that Palestinian Christians do not have an easy history. It is a history full of people feeling poor in spirit, with a lot of reason to mourn, people who are reviled and persecuted. In present-day Israel, Palestinian Christians are a minority within a minority. They are a minority in the Arabic-speaking world as Most of their sisters and brothers are Muslim, and they are a minority in the state of Israel where Jewish identity confers rights that are often unavailable to Palestinians. To be clear, I am not trying to make any sort of statement on the extremely complex relations between Israelis and Palestinians in Israel now, this past week, But we know that it is a situation of deep and great hardship for everyone. That in the last days, Israeli Jews and Arab Palestinians have been killed. And yet, there is this little church, this little denomination, the Evangelical Lutheran Church in Jordan and the Holy Holy Land, And they have never in their history had a woman pastor. And by the grace of God, there was a little girl who grew up at the Church of the Redeemer, and she went away to Germany to study theology, and now she has returned to her homeland, to her home city. And her church was ready for her to be ordained. And I watched parts of that ordination this week, It was like two and a half hours. The building was packed with her community, with her family, with her friends, and with representatives from the church around the world. Multiple bishops with their funny hats, lots and lots of pastors and priests all decked out. And At the moment of the ordination, they all gathered around her and laid hands on her. And they blessed her for service in the church. And now the Reverend Sally Azar is the first ever Palestinian Christian woman pastor. And we trust in faith that that the God of the cross will go with her, will accompany her as she preaches, as she administers the sacraments, as she provides care to her people in the very city where Jesus was crucified and Christianity was born. And no doubt the road for her, for all Palestinian Christians, for all people living in Jerusalem now, will be very 
difficult. There will be countless future occasions for mourning and for hunger for righteousness and feeling the opposite of blessed. And yet this morning, Jesus' words echo around the world, blessed are you. He is shouting it out. He is blessing the Reverend Sally Azar. He is blessing the churches of Palestinian Christians in the Middle East. He is blessing you and me, our little assembly at All Saints in Big Sky. And somehow that blessing of Jesus is deep enough, is wide enough to fall on all of us. And it gives us just enough grace. Just enough grace to go out of these doors today seeking justice, loving kindness, and walking humbly with the God who has already come to walk with us. Amen. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, 
suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Called together to follow Jesus, let us pray for the church, the world, and all in need. Cultivate humility in your church. In gatherings of every size, teach us to boast only in the cross. Shape your church to be people of kindness, generosity, and justice. Merciful God. The foundations of the earth bear witness to your faithfulness. The mountains echo with your holiness. When we mistreat your creation, show us the error of our ways. Inspire us to honor all you have made. Merciful God. You make foolish the wisdom of the world. Raise up honorable leaders who seek justice, love mercy, and walk humbly. Frustrate plans that are corrupt and self-seeking. Prosper the work of peacemakers and all those who provide aid to people in crisis. Especially, we pray today for Episcopal Relief and Development, Lutheran World Relief, and ELCA Disaster Response. Merciful God, bless your people around the world. Especially today, we lift up those grieving the victims of the worship bombing in the De Democratic Republic of Congo and the victims of shootings in California and Georgia and their families. We pray for those protesting in South America and all those seeking asylum in our own country. Merciful God, bless all those whom the world rejects. Accompany those who have been told they are foolish or weak. Reveal your power and presence at work where it is least expected. Give your strength and wisdom to all in need, especially those on our prayer list. Jeremy, Michelle, Jess, Aubrey, Carol, the Fry family, Sharon, Pete, Rick, Jaden, Dorothea, Ginger, Julie, Rick, Melissa, Lexi, Daniela, Isabella, Julie, Cynthia, Lauren, Gordon, Kyle, Walden, Gail, Jane, Izzy, and Jill. Merciful God, praise to you for your blessed saints in every time and place, especially Audrey Tostevin and John Kirchner. Trusting you accompanied all the saints through every trial. Help us trust you abide with us also in every trouble. Merciful God, we bring to you our needs and hopes, O God, trusting your wisdom and power revealed in Christ crucified, in whose name we pray. Amen. The peace of Christ be with you always.
the Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks It is indeed right, our duty and our joy, that we should at all times and in all places give thanks and praise to you, almighty and merciful God, through our Savior Jesus Christ, who on this day overcame death and the grave and by his glorious resurrection opened to us the way of everlasting life. And so with all the choirs of angels, with the church on earth and the hosts of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. Blessed are you, Lord of heaven and earth. From age to age, your creation sings your praises. You feed even the birds of the air, and you clothe the field with lilies. You gave your blessing to Abraham and his descendants, and you spoke with Moses, Elijah, and David. Blessed are you, Lord our God. Blessed are you, Lord our God. You fulfilled your covenant with us in Jesus. He is Emmanuel your beloved son, the star that guides us to wisdom, the treasure hidden in a field. He is the landowner who overpays the workers, the judge who separates good and evil. Blessed are you, Lord our God. For us he lived, for us he died, for us he rose to eternal life. Then and now he invites us to your banquet. In the night in which he was betrayed, Our Lord Jesus took bread, gave thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup. He gave thanks and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. We hear his call. We repent our ways and we enter with joy into the kingdom of heaven. Send your Holy Spirit here on your gathered disciples. Make of this meal the body and blood of righteousness. Heal us and grant us your forgiveness that we may love you and serve our neighbors. Blessed are you, Lord our God. Blessed are you, Lord our God, our our Father in heaven, the rock on which we build, the dove alighting on us all. We worship you and sing our praises today and to the end of the age. Amen. Amen. And now as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. gifts of God for the people of God.
sin of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world, have mercy.
brings forth abundantly from this table. Renew our strength to do justice, love kindness, and journey humbly with you. Amen. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord's face shine on you with grace and mercy. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. Amen. Go in peace, follow the way of Jesus. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God.